I'm Doug Trumbull. In 1979, when Star Trek The Motion Picture was made, I was hired under extremely complicated circumstances to do the visual effects for the movie. I was a little bit arrogant. When I was asked if I would be interested in doing the visual effects for Star Trek, I said, no, no, I, you know, that's a television series. And it was an extremely challenging project to do because it had as many shots in it as Star Wars and Close Encounters combined that we had to do in six months. Well, any man who could manage such a feat, I would not dare disappoint. She'll launch on time, sir, and she'll be ready. We said, well, we can just dam the torpedoes, so to speak, and we're gonna figure out how to do this thing, and it will require working 24 hours a day. Three crews a day, seven days a week, for the whole six months. And they were all Vista Vision, and we were all 70 millimeters, so we had to figure out how to combine different formats as well during the production. It's very technologically complicated. Bob Wise knew I was a director, and he trusted me implicitly to fix this thing for him. And so I directed this entire sequence. I had a tremendous amount of creative freedom given to me by Bob Wise and the studio, and a virtually unlimited budget. This sequence was all about arriving at the Enterprise and cruising around it and doing this series of reveal shots. As you approach, you have to look through this dry dock to the Enterprise, which is docked inside of it, so you never quite get to see it. As the little shuttle vehicle, uh, which has got Shatner in it, um, passes the Enterprise, we had to have a lot of interactive lighting, so it seemed to actually be there. So we did all kinds of compositing where we would make these silhouettes of the object by just photographing it unlit against a white card in the background. So you'll see shots of the Enterprise with just white behind it and it's all just a silhouette. That's to create the mat so that you can superimpose it over the Earth or the stars. But there were a couple of shots we introduced to have weightlessness of a little astronaut that flips upside down or little shuttles that go by in the foreground and background to establish scale. The shuttle comes around and you find it turns and then faces the Enterprise from the front. That's the big reveal shot. And that was where Goldsmith cut loose with the most beautiful music cue ever. And you get to see the Enterprise in its full glory. Richard Urasich and I came up with this whole new lighting concept, part of which was based on making the Enterprise so it could light itself up. That even if it was in deep space where there's no sun, no planet, no moon, no key, no fill, no nothing, it would look interesting and be credible as having lights on itself that shined up onto the nacelles, lights on the cells that shined onto the body, lights underneath that would shine up under the disc, and lights on the top that would shine out over the top of the disc. And then you just start moving in and moving in and moving in. And we had to build special lenses and special camera gear to actually get the camera close to the Enterprise. So there's this snorkel lens that would get the objective lens far enough and close enough to the Enterprise to actually move past it up close. I wanted it to be this beautiful, epic, spectacular sequence that had no dialogue, no story, no plot. Everything stops and let the audience just love the Enterprise. I wanted everybody to buy into the beauty of space 
and the beauty of their mission and the beauty of the enterprise itself and just have everybody get out of the way and let that happen, which was something I'd really learned with Kubrick on 2001. Stop talking for a while and just let it all flow.